we make impact on not just each other through our faculty and our students and our, our connections on campus, but also in our communities, in our states, in our nation and all across the world. And we are seeing our students do and graduates do amazing things. We're the storytellers. We tell stories in so many different ways in the College of the Arts and Media. We make and create, we design and paint, we report and speak, perform, all kinds of teaching that takes place, music educators, so many of the music educators in the state of Michigan and across the region and, and all across the world uh, went to CMU and did their music education here. We make films and we process films and we produce them and engineer them through broadcasting and uh, radio, TV. We cut records and we make music uh, for our amazing performers all across uh, our area. We research and we investigate, we add beauty and we add light to our world. So there's several departments and schools that are part of the College of the Arts and Media. Art and Design, uh, let me tell you, is the department that includes several areas. Animation is super exciting because it is one of our newest majors and we are going to see incredible growth there. Our students that are in the animation are already doing really cool things with uh, entering and winning animation contests for animated shorts. Uh, broadcast and medic arts, unequaled resources and facilities. Our communication students are leading communication efforts right now today. Uh, they are studying how people are communicating in social media and in real time, real life. They're writing the, the speeches for your politicians and for corporate America. School of Music is creating beauty in so many ways. Uh, I have a freshman that is a uh, operatic vocal performance student in School of Music and it's been a really great experience for myself and my family as well. Our journalists, uh, including our CM Life newspaper, which is at our multimedia organization really, is second to none in the state and frankly, it's a major winner across the nation. Theater and dance, uh, they are so active, more than 30 productions a year, including our summer theater, which we will see coming up in the future as, again, coming back as just doing some great things. But I wanted to focus really quickly on interdisciplinary. It's such a key word in the College of the Arts and Media. We know that the most successful people in our worlds are people who have skills in multiple areas. Uh, interdisciplinary skills in more than one discipline makes a really successful professional. Integrated public relations is one of the biggest majors in the College of the Arts and Media. And those are the folks that are managing the communications, managing the public relations of corporations and politicians and governments and nonprofit agencies right now today. Imagine how much of an impact they're having because of this crisis that we're, the whole world is in right now. Uh, internships are required for so many of our programs, including IPR. IPR interns right now are getting the experience of a lifetime. Communication and, and, and IPR learn crisis communications. They're getting to experience that real time today. Multimedia design is another great example. There's nobody that has that is successful and has skills only in one area. Multimedia design is a, a minor that can go along with a whole bunch of different majors all across the university. And uh, for instance, a journalist, you know, they don't just write for a paper, right? They have to be able to maybe edit video for social media and pictures that might come into their, uh, their media publication. So they learn how to do that in multimedia design. Music and theater, it's a great mix of music depart college school of music and uh, all the great uh, things you learn in theater. All kinds of majors in college of arts and media. Um, note that in art and design, if you're looking for fashion merchandising, uh, uh, interior design, marketing, those are happening in uh, education human services. You might be surprised to note that we have advertising under journalism. It is not always intuitive. Some people go into marketing, they think, oh, I wanna make the ads. Well, turns out we do that in the, in the journalism because the writing the content and managing uh, the media and the content are, are so ingrained into what we do in College of the Arts and Media. Certainly, everything that you might else expect uh, under broadcast thematic arts and, and music theater and those interdisciplinary areas are 
outstanding. Uh, for those of you not interested in majors in the College of the Arts and Media, I still want you to be participating in uh, what you love because we know that so many students when they're in high school and even when they go on to college, they still wanna stay involved in music or, or be in that theater production or maybe even be tech. We have engineering students in our, in our tech productions all the time. Um, you can still be involved in music and theater. You just have to audition all of our ensembles, all of our choirs, all of our theater productions. They're all accessible to you. And it is a great opportunity to stay involved in what you really love. We wanna see you continue doing that. Uh, Co-curricular is a key word that you hear in College of the Arts and Media. And um, part of developing the skills that employers value is having experience. So you wanna have experience being in public relations? Well then join our uh, actual public relations firm that is run by students. Be a broadcaster in the New Central 34. Uh, all these experiences that you will get in outside of class are what actually will likely, in addition to your coursework, make you more successful in the workplace. I'd love to answer any questions. I wanna turn back to Kayla, she'll help us manage that. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Awesome, we, actually, we have questions coming up right now. Oh, great. The first question that we have, um, let me pull it up real quick. It says, can I be in the marching band too through your college? Oh, that's a super great question. A uh, marching band is anybody who uh, wants to play and be in the marching band, they have to audition. And we're working on a process right now for our freshmen to do that, given that we are moving towards a more of an online environment for uh, our summer. We're our, I just spoke with our marching band director and they are working on a virtual audition process and that will be announced very shortly. That's awesome. Another question we have, what is IPR? Yeah, IPR is Integrative Public Relations. It's public relations that you, skills that you gain through communications, broadcast, cinematic arts, and through journalism because those three areas are so germane to being able to manage the relations that a company, business, government has with the public. All right, students, don't forget to continue posting those questions. If you have any more questions about the College of Arts and Media, we will answer them later on in our question and answer section. Let's continue on. We will now have the College of Business Administration. Please welcome to the screen, the Director of Student Services, Karen Arthur. Karen? Give us one second while we we'll get Karen's mic on. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Kayla, it's so good to see you. I'm really excited. Let me pull my presentation up. All right, so as Kayla mentioned, I'm Karen Arthur, Director of Business Student Services, and really excited to share with you uh, some of the things I'm most proud of to be a member of the community here in our CBA as we uh, refer to our college. Okay, so let's take a look first at our majors. Number one question probably many of you are getting as you think about coming to CNU and studying business. We have 17 majors spread across seven departments. So our School of Accounting, our Economics Department, our Information Systems Department, Management, Marketing and Hospitality Services, as well as Finance and Law. One of the things that's most reassuring is that no matter what your thoughts are, you'll start with the foundation of courses in your first two years. So you'll study accounting and economics and management, and you'll have a chance to dive in to all the functional areas that are so important. Imagine fast forward once you're in your career, you need to have a good understanding of all the functional areas. So maybe you're that marketing analyst, but you need to understand how budgets work and how those decisions are made. So as you look a little bit closer at the screen, I want you to think a little bit about this. When we look at the skills you'll use, you're going to be problem solving, using critical thinking skills, and your relationship, relationship skills with others. So teamwork, communications, persuasion, leading. Uh, perhaps you will help others with their investment decisions. 
um, pointing out our personal financial planning program. We're so proud to uh, tell you that our wealth management, the wealth management uh, magazine has named CME's PFP program seventh out of 330 schools nationwide. Um, in addition, in our finance department, our students recently competed in the National Investment Banking Competition of Canada and um, really just beat out uh, 10,000 students from 200 uh, universities, Yale, Cambridge, so big name schools, and we're really proud that our um, two top students won that competition. So no matter what your interest area is, when you look at the majors on, on the screen in front of you, you have a chance to really set yourself apart. Okay. So one of the things that we really value in the College of Business are the transformational learning experiences. And this is the exciting piece um, for me to watch students come in as freshmen, get engaged in our student organizations, get coaching from our faculty, our innovative faculty. So um, two of our signature events that take place at CMU. First, it's our ERP SIM. This is our enterprise resource planning simulation. And what I love most about this competition is we have uh, mentors from about 50 different companies across the nation who mentor our students over a period of several months in making smart decisions um, using data. And so we are the nation's leader in SAP software. We uh, graduate more students who are certified in SAP every year. Um, and so the ERP SIM is a very vibrant um, competition and many students walk away with internship offers, full-time positions, scholarships. It's really exciting. Secondly, our other key uh, signature event is our new venture competition. This is CME's version of Shark Tank. So for real, our students are working in teams and getting um, coaching and mentoring and um, tips. They're pitching their business plans to angel investors the grand prize is a $30,000 prize for that business to launch. So we see a lot of great teams coming together. And as you hear from um, our colleagues across the university, these teams are coming from any college at the university. So our business students are pairing with our engineering students, um, other science students, or our fashion merchandising students together. They're um, pitching their ideas for business plans. So very exciting. The other thing I just want to mention is our Michigan Finance Scholars Program. This is an exceptional program where our students have also been placing at competitions um, nationally. So whatever it is that you come and decide to study, whatever your passion area is, you're going to have those out of classroom experiences to support what you're learning in the classroom. Certifications are another great way to set yourself apart. So again, no matter what you're thinking about, you'll have a chance to explore all of our programs in your very first Business 100 class. You'll have an integrated experience in your junior year where you develop a growth, a growth plan for a real company. Um, and then you'll have client-based projects. Our students solve real business programs, our business problems right in their classes. So they have hands-on experience and um, work closely with their faculty and other professionals, alumni, recruiters throughout their coursework. Engagement and support is very important. You'll find this no matter what you study at CMU. Um, our faculty are going to be guiding you and helping you out with those decisions that you're uh, exploring for your career. Um, the career development piece is very important. So our students connect with recruiters through our employer spotlight program. Uh, recruiters are in the building talking to students in between their classes, they're presenting, and then they're interviewing our students. So we have two large career fairs every year and many uh, medium-sized career fairs for students in their student organizations. Academic advising is important for all colleges at CMU. And so what we do is we connect with you at orientation. We support you every semester. We guide you as you're making those decisions. Um, so those are a few uh, key summary statements about our support we offer. We do want to tell you a little bit about our residential colleges. At CMU, a residential college is a great beginning point for you to just explore um, opportunities in your discipline with other students who have similar majors as you. And the idea here is you really get a jump start. You are mentored 
you have a professional academic advisor and program director. And the key here is we're connecting you to other successful students, students who are first year students like yourself and junior and senior level students who mentor you and help you through the process of preparing your resume for your first career fair and what to wear and how to interact with recruiters. So um, we really recommend you look into the residential college programs for all of our programs at CMU. The positive outcomes uh, speak for themselves. Our students are heavily recruited. We see many students who have multiple internships, which leads to multiple offers. Um, and so that's really a great way for you to prepare and gain the experience you need. Um, even students uh, after their first year will, will see that internship experience open up to them. So really excited about the positive outcomes our students have. I mentioned all those employers, 10,000 plus uh, through our career development center at CMU for all CMU students. And so on the screen today, you'll just get a little bit of an idea of where are some of our students going? Um, so we have a top business program. We're extremely proud and I welcome your questions. Awesome. We do have questions coming in for you, Karen. So the first question is from Taryn. And Taryn asks, how easy is it to switch majors within the same academic college and other academic colleges? This is a really great question because as I meet with first student, first year students, I I, I see that that you, you're, you know, many students are struggling with uh, what to major in. So we have tremendous academic advisor support. And so if you just share those thoughts you're having with your academic advisor, we'll start you out with competency requirements, English and speech and your university program courses. So no matter what your interests are, just communicate with your advisor and we'll set you up for success. Perfect. Another question that's coming in, it says, does CBA host job fair to help land a job when you graduate? So yes, our career fairs are a vital and part, part of our experience for students. So um, we kick those off um, every fall, every semester where you'll, you'll meet over a hundred employers at a, a large career fair. And then we have many recruitment fairs throughout the semester tied to the student organizations and majors that you have. So lots of opportunities. Perfect. And then one more question from Mandy. What is the percentage of students from the business college that receive internships at school and leave with a job when they graduate? That's a great question. As far as internships, let me address that. Um, some of our majors have required internships. All of our students are encouraged to pursue an internship. And what we see is that roughly 75% of employers are telling us they use their interns as their pipeline, as their primary pipeline. So that's why we really push those early internship experiences. And so again, I would say that the majority of those students who you saw are 94%, the majority of those students um, do have internship or applied experiences throughout their career. Um, so those results are really exciting. That's really good to hear. And I'm sure very um, good for the students as well. So thank you students for those questions. Again, if you have more about the College of Business Administration, continue to put them in the chat box below. We will address them later. How many of you all are thinking about going into business? Let me see you in the comments. All right, we're gonna continue along. We're gonna go to our third college that we're featuring, featuring today, which is the College of Education and Human Services. Please welcome to the screen, Coordinator of Undergraduate Prospective Student Services, Katie Bischel. Katie. Hey, Kayla. Hey, everyone. Let me go ahead and get my presentation pulled up for you. Okay, guys, like Kayla said, my name is Katie Bischel. I am the coordinator of undergraduate prospective student services for the College of Education and Human Services. A very long way of saying I work with prospective students who want to pursue and explore the programs we offer within our college. So the college, oh, oh. uh oh. There we go. So the College of Education and Human Services is very unique in that we offer five academic departments and we are split with education pretty straightforward teacher education but then we have this really unique set of programs called human services where we can truly find something for everyone 
no matter which of our departments you're looking at, we're preparing students for careers that are gonna enhance the lives of others. And by others, we mean working with people that cover the age range as well. Looking at our five academic departments, they can really be split up into four separate areas. So we start with that education piece, teacher education. CMU is actually founded as a teacher's college. We have been preparing teachers for more than 125 years, and we're still placing more than 300 teaching candidates into the field each and every year, something we are very proud of. So our three undergraduate programs in this area, so the two departments would be the Department of Law. The, I, sorry about that, you guys. I blanked for a second. So the Department of Teacher Education and Professional Development, as well as the Department of Counseling and Special Education. So counseling is a graduate level program here at CMU, but we do have three undergraduate programs as well. We start with elementary education. This will prepare you to teach grades pre-K through six, and you're really focused on the basics. Next, we move into secondary education. This will have you teach grades six through 12, but you are gonna have a primary responsibility, something like English, mathematics, science, social studies, whatever your preference is. In looking at elementary and secondary, we do have more than 25 majors and minors that you can choose from. We also offer special education. This is one of those unique K through 12 endorsements where you can choose either cognitive or emotional impairment. So moving on to the other side of our college is where we find human services. So this has three of our academic departments, starting with the Department of Human Development and Family Studies. The first program we offer is called Child Development. This is where you can explore the growth and development of children from birth through adolescence but more so in the context of families and communities. One of the positions our graduates will seek would be becoming a child life specialist. Next up, we have early childhood development and learning. This is a great option for those of you who wanna work, work with young children, but not in the elementary school setting. So this would allow you to work in either a daycare, preschool, or maybe even a Head Start program. Next, we move to family studies. So this will give you the skills to educate and support families in a variety of human services related fields. Upon graduation, you can apply to be a certified family life educator. Moving to our next department in human services, we find the Department of Fashion, Interior Design and Merchandising. We kick things off with fashion merchandising and design. Here, our students are gonna study aesthetic and functional design, but also marketing and retailing of apparel and textiles in preparation for a variety of careers in the fashion industry. You can major in either fashion merchandising or fashion design, but we also do offer a minor in visual merchandising. We also find interior design located in this department, and this is where you can learn to create and reinvent not only better home spaces, but also workspaces. We do emphasize an integrated approach that will relate interior design to both society as well as architecture. If you have any interest in our programs in the Department of Fashion, Interior Design, and Merchandising, we do encourage you next Friday, April 17th, we have some specialty virtual visits for these programs. Feel free to reach out to me and I would love to get you signed up for any of those. Our last department is the Department of Recreation, Parks, and Leisure Services Administration. This really is an exploratory program department for many of our students. A lot of times you don't know a ton about these programs until you get on campus. So we kick things off with outdoor and environmental recreation. This is a really great fit for students who've thought about teacher education, but you really don't wanna be confined by the four walls of a classroom. So some of the career options for you would be working in camps, parks, adventure programs, even being a conservation officer. So really taking the learning outdoors. Next, we have recreation and event management. So this prepares you to not only work for the for-profit, but also the not-for-profit recreation and event management industry. Our students go on to work in a variety of places, including theme parks, community centers, festivals, military recreation. The possibilities are endless. It just depends on where your passion lies and where you wanna begin your career. Last but not least, we have therapeutic recreation. This is going to give you the knowledge, skills, and practical experience.
experience necessary to become a certified therapeutic recreation specialist. In this major, our students really provide functional treatment and activities for clients with intellectual as well as physical disabilities. Many times you will be working in the hospital setting. Something else we really like pointing out with our college is that we are home of the leadership minor. It is housed in our Department of Recreation, Parks and Leisure Services Administration. This is one of our most popular minors on campus, and it truly does complement a variety of academic programs, including health professions, communications, business, political science. Our coursework is going to emphasize service learning, but also practical experiences. A few other things we like pointing out in the College of Education and Human Services is that all of our undergraduate programs do require a hands-on experience of either an internship or your student teaching component, but we're also fortunate to have really great specialized spaces right on campus for our students to get their feet wet before they're beginning their first career. So whether it's the Center for Excellence in STEM Education for our teacher edu education students exploring a STEM field, or it's our state-of-the-art child development and learning laboratory that houses 72 three and four-year-olds that our early childhood development and learning students get to work with. We're very fortunate to have these spaces at our students' fingertips. Like many of the other colleges, we do have a residential college. This is a really great opportunity for you to surround yourself with like-minded people. You're gonna really have a great service learning opportunity. You're gonna participate in community outreach but you're also gonna gain leadership and professional skills. We are located on the second floor of Sweeney Hall. And as you're filling out your um, housing application, this is a great option for students, again, to um, get started on the right foot. I cannot thank you guys enough for joining me today. I apologize for my small hiccup earlier. Um, if you are interested in learning more about the College of Education and Human Services, if you're pretty set on one of our programs, I do encourage you to follow us on Facebook. We are CMU College of Education and Human Services, but we could not be more excited to have you joining us this fall. So back to you, Kayla. Thank you, Katie. I believe you have some questions coming as well. Uh -oh. Here we go. So Kara asks, what if I am not completely sure what subject I want to teach? What resources are there to help with that? And when would I have to decide that by? So absolutely. So we are really fortunate that we do have college advisors for the College of Education and Human Services. They're going to help you explore where your passion lies and what the best fit for you is going to be. Again, with secondary education, you have to be set and you have to pick a teachable subject area. For elementary education, you don't have to have that teachable subject area. So um, orientation is going to be a really great option to discuss with our academic advisors um, some of the options that are available, but you can also reach out to me and we can set up a virtual session to start looking at what some of those pathways are going to look like. Perfect. And fun fact, Katie, I'm not sure if you knew this, but I'm also a proud EHS grad as my major, one of my majors was childhood development. Perfect. Yes, I loved it. So again, students, if you have any more questions about the College of Education and Human Services, go ahead and put them in the chat box below. We would love to answer them towards the end. All right. We are going to keep moving and grooving and go to the next college that we will feature, which is the College of Health Professions. Please welcome Associate Dean, Dr. Greg Zimmerman. Greg. Thank you, Kayla. Let me get my presentation loaded. Good afternoon, everyone. As Associate Dean in the Herbert H. and Grace A. Dow College of Health Professions, I'm thrilled to share with you highlights and features of what I consider to be the premier health professions college in the state. I know that's a bold statement, but I think you'll agree that when you compare a world-renowned faculty and outstanding facilities against comparable institutions, 
Uh, this includes 250,000 square feet of learning spaces uh, comprised of our Carl's Clinic, active learning classrooms, 100, uh, excuse me, 12 instructional laboratories, 10 research laboratories, many of which are collaborations with our college partners across campus, including psychology and neuroscience as an example. I do wanna make a special note, we just opened our uh, Center for Integrated Health Studies, which includes our Interprofessional Education and Practice Center. And as we all know, uh, healthcare uh, disciplines and professionals work within teams. And this is a wonderful center that allows for great stimulation of those teams. Now we pride ourselves on faculty-student collaborations on research projects and strong internship partnerships where we have over 2,000 affiliation agreements at this time, including 555 international sites. Of course, our Embedded Student Service Center is easily accessible within our atrium, and now a closer look at some of our program offerings. We have five departments in our college with their own distinct programs. The first is Communication Sciences and Disorders. A couple of points I want to make are, firstly, I know your reference point at this time is an undergraduate degree. However, several of our programs in health are ladder programs that lead very nicely into graduate degrees. Secondly, we offer several minors in our college and across campus. I highly encourage undergraduate students to select a complementary minor as it will make you more marketable and attractive to employers. For example, uh, I have a CMU bachelor's degree in sports medicine, athletic training with a minor in public health education. Uh, like Kayla, I'm also a two-time alum. I have a master's degree in health administration. But again, I highly encourage you to select that complimentary minor. Our next department is health sciences where we have several specialties to select from. Those include exercise science, where we have three options to uh, choose, a clinical program in cardiopulmonary rehabilitation, diagnostic testing. Uh, we have a health fitness concentration, uh, self-explanatory, and then kinesiology, uh, which is also a graduate or professional degree in exercise physiology. We also have in this department health administration, for the business side of health and public health education. And again, emphasis on minors in community health, health fitness, substance abuse disorders. Physical education and sport is our next department. And this is a fine example of our collaboration with the College of Education for those seeking specialization to teach health and physical education in K through 12. Sport management is also a very popular degree on the business side of sports health. The fourth department is the School of Rehabilitation and Medical Sciences, one of our larger departments in the college with many options, including, as I mentioned before, athletic training. And the unique feature about athletic training is the accrediting body for athletic training has actually ratcheted up the requirements to a master's degree. So, what we have done is we've uh, combined the master's degree with the bachelor's degree. It's a three plus two program. So five years that you spend here on campus, you'll walk away with both a bachelor's degree and a master's degree. We also have the dietetics major, and again, a minor in nutrition. Our last department is physical therapy. And I only mention this as many of our undergraduate students have this as their ultimate career goal. And oftentimes students will pursue one of our available bachelor's degree programs with the intent to pursue the doctor of physical therapy degree. An additional example of a collaboration that we enjoy is with the College of Science and Engineering, and that is the environmental health and safety bachelor's degree. Now this slide I'm sharing with you to illustrate the point of our gateway programs that lead to advanced degrees. And as you can see, um, many bachelor's degrees align themselves well with professional health or medical degrees. And that first column, if you'll see uh, the physician's assistant program, health science bachelor's degree uh, awardees 
uh, are number two as far as uh, individuals pursuing this degree. And you can see the others within our college that actually lead towards or prepare you very well for a physician's assistant school. On the right-hand column, you'll see is physical therapy. And again, the number one bachelor's degree that students pursue here at CMU to go on to physical therapy is exercise science. And you can see the remaining, kinesiology, health science, and athletic training. So again, a nice ladder approach, a nice gateway, if you will. Perhaps the common theme of the College of Health Professions is the human connection. And one final point I'd like to add is in healthcare, there's a career for each person's interest. For example, if you want direct patient care side, we have programs in athletic training, communication sciences and disorders, dietetics, RN to BSN, physician's assistant, and physical therapy. If you want the business side of health, we have health administration and sports management as examples. If you like to solve problems and puzzles or focus on prevention, public health, exercise science, and environmental health and studies, excuse me, environmental health and safety is another great example of opportunities available to you. Lastly, we are here to assist you in our student service center, and this is an example of the individuals that will be ready to uh, speak with you directly. And with that, I will hand it back to my colleague, Kayla, or answer any questions you may have. Absolutely. You have some questions coming in, so here we go. One question asks, um, do you recommend that students do both their undergrad and graduate program at CMU for the health professions programs? Are there any advantages? You know, I absolutely agree with that. You know, there's a school of thought that you should have a diversified background when it comes to pursuing your degrees, going from bachelor's to master's and even potentially a doctorate degree. But, but frankly, if you talk to the employers, they see no disadvantage whatsoever with getting multiple degrees from the same institution. The beauty of getting both your bachelor's and master's at CMU is that you develop a rapport and, and a familiarity with the facilities, the faculty, and uh, it's a very strong component, I feel, of a pursuit of degrees here at CMU. And frankly, again, being a two-time alum, CMU was nice enough to welcome me back. Uh, you'll establish a family when you attend CMU. Absolutely, I totally agree with that. Another question we have from Cole, how come sports management is in the HPRC, even with classes that outline more of the business side? Can you repeat that, Kayla? Absolutely. So Cole had asked, how is it that sports, sports management is in the health professions residential college, even though they have classes that outline more on the business side of things? Well, that's a very good question. You know, one could make the argument even that health administration maybe should be more closely aligned with business. And, and while you may find differences across the nation with regards to the placement of both sports management and health administration, um, we found that the best alignment at CMU is within the College of Health Profession. There is just really a great alignment of those courses, the faculty, the research, uh, the application. And so uh, while you may find differences, we found the home to be with health professions, uh, a perfect setting, including the Health Professions Residential College. And again, a special plug to our residential college, a living and learning community, where we find that students who, den, who do tend to stay in that a residential college actually perform better than students that do not. That's a good note. Thank you so much, Greg. Thank you. Absolutely. Another fun fact, I am also a proud graduate of the Health Professions College as I had also majored in um, communication sciences and disorders. So I was able to be a member of the College of Health Professions and the College of EHS. So I know that was the question that was listed in the uh, comment so section below. You can do both colleges and still graduate in four years. All right, so we are going to continue to move on to our next college. Our fifth college that we are highlighting today is the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. Please welcome to the screen, Director of Recruitment and Retention, Kathy Rice. Thank you so much, Kayla, for inviting me. I am so happy to talk with students today. Let me just get my video up.
All righty. Well, you've heard about so many majors and minors and certificates because CMU has so much to offer. Today, or right now, I'm going to tell you about the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. So we are the college that works on the social issues and works with people. And so if you're the kind of student that people come to when they have problems, that you'll probably want to take courses or maybe even major in one of the programs in our college. So we do that in a variety of ways. So each major offers a little bit different take on how to work with people. So make so programs in English and cultural and global studies, anthropology, museum studies, the world languages like Spanish, French, German, those are really going to help you work with people because you'll understand culture and know the language and how to communicate. Other courses like political science, public administration, sociology, social work, military science and leadership. These are gonna teach you how to engage in the community. And then finally, our, our psychology courses, history class, philosophy, religion, those are gonna help you understand how people behave and why people think the way they do. So all of these are integral into working with people and solving the complex problems in society. We do this with a variety of different methods, uh, such as study abroad and working in the classrooms, undergraduate research, hands-on field uh, programs. Uh, we even have uh, game-based learning, which is really exciting, and um, just a lot of different methods of, of getting the information to you. So you're not just sitting there listening to lecture all the time. You're actually getting out and talking to people and touching things and interacting. So uh, internships, Almost all of our programs will have an internship or a capstone course. So when you get uh, when you get those professional skills, so we go out into the field. You're not act, you actually have some experience to guide you. Um, speaking of going out and getting a job, going out and being a professional, our majors actually end up across all the industries. So. You might, you might be at, in education as a school social worker, as a teacher of history. You might be in business and industry. A lot of our alumni end up being managers or owners or analysts. Um, and then in government as a lawyer or senator, representative, um, nonprofit corporations. A lot of times there's a myth that nonprofit doesn't doesn't get paid. Yes, you actually can be paid and work in an organization that does exactly what you want to do and makes a difference and, and solves that human, human connection. Um, so healthcare, uh, psychologists, social workers, other staff in the health industry, and then uh, public, public service and uh, so all of those are areas where you can you can work with a with one of our majors. So and we have a residential college and our students are are very dedicated to improving the lives of people and society. So they form committees based on their interests. So uh, this year's committees were uh, awareness of mental health issues, effects of poverty and economic injustice, uh, the committee to promote inclusion and identity development, uh, committee to promote sustainability and community development. So if those are kinds of things that you're interested in, you definitely want to look at some of our classes in the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences and, and check us out. The, our majors are very small and we definitely encourage people to do double majors or majors and minors. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity to go across 
programs and across colleges. So anyway, if you have any questions, my name is Kathy Rice. I'm the Director of Recruitment and Retention for the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. Just shoot me an email. I'd be happy to answer your questions. And I look so forward to seeing you in the fall. I miss the students. <laughs> this is hard. <laughs> I know they miss you too, Kathy. I can't wait for us all to reconnect back on campus in Mount Pleasant. Now, could you give us some examples of popular study abroad destinations in your academic college? Oh my goodness, our students go everywhere. Um, like the example on the screen was Greece. Oh. Um, so the, the political science department went to Greece. We have the philosophy department goes to Hague and they actually do uh, like the world peace. Uh, they work with that. We've had, we all of our majors like Spanish, French, German, they go wherever the people speak that language. So they're all over the place. That is awesome. I love study abroad and I had the chance to study abroad when I was a junior. Students, who's thinking about studying abroad? Let me see those comments. Let's, let's see. We have another question from Miranda who asks, is international relations in this academic college? Yes, so that would be in the political science department. So underneath each department, there's multiple majors, minors, and certificates. So there's there's quite a few. It's probably eighty. I didn't want to list them all, but <laughs> yes, this is this is the college for you if that's what you're interested in. Yep. And there are links in the comment section as well if you want to explore more of that. All right, and students, again, we are rocking and rolling. We have our final academic college. So thank you for keeping up with us. Our last academic college is the College of Science and Engineering. Please welcome Director of Student Services, Heidi Mahone. Heidi. Thank you, Kayla. All right, let me get my presentation up here, up and running. As Kayla told you, my name is Heidi Mahon, Director of Student Services for the College of Science and Engineering. And at, at CMU, the College of Science and Engineering covers every STEM field possible. We actually have nine departments, biology, chemistry, biochemistry, computer science, earth and atmospheric sciences, engineering and technology, geography and environmental studies, mathematics, physics, and statistics, actuarial, and data sciences. Now that is a lot to think about. So we're not gonna talk about departments today. We're gonna to talk about areas of interest. I broke them down into six areas. They are the environment, engineering, technology, natural sciences, health, and teaching. So for today's discussion, we're only going to talk about five of those because you already heard from the College of Education and Human Services, Katie Bischel, science education, we're not gonna talk about. If you are interested in teaching K through 12 for science, go ahead and talk to Kay. Katie, she will help you out with that. So for the first area, environment, most people think just of biology, and that's great. You can study the environment through biology, but there is so much more to the environment, especially at CMU. Geography is going to surprise you through this whole little discussion because they are a surprising department. It's not just memorization of state capitals and countries. In fact, we have two environmental majors in the Department of Geography. The first is environmental and land use planning. Most students who major in that go on to be city planners. They figure out where to put roads and culverts so it doesn't affect the environment and it does the best for the city that they are planning in. The other major is environmental studies. That is where people look and protect and understand the resources. It's resource management. A lot of these students go on to work in politics. Um, they work with legislators to help protect the environment. In contrast to that, from our Department of Earth and Atmospheric Sciences, we have environmental science. And that major, people look, they learn how to study the environment 
how to study the chemicals moving through the system, how to study the water that moves through the environment. And lastly, we have from engineering and technology, a new major environmental engineering. And we're gonna go and talk to, about engineering right now. So as I mentioned, we have environmental engineering, but we have three other engineering degrees as well. Computer engineering, electrical engineering, and mechanical engineering. And then we have some engineering technology majors. Now the difference between the engineering side and the engineering technology side is the difference between theory versus applied. Engineering is a little bit more math-based, a little bit more physics-based, and it's heavier on the theory. Whereas engineering technology is more applied-based, a little less on uh, the math and the physics, but it's more hands-on. Now, both for engineering and engineering technology, you building things, you will be working with your hands. They are all very hands-on uh, programs. So I mentioned computer engineering. That is actually building the hardware, working with the circuits and building the hardware of computers. And that ties into the next area, which is technology. So computer engineering is building the hardware. Computer science is building the software. And then information technology, that is how users interface with the hardware and software. How do they utilize websites? How are they interacting with games? That is what a computer science major and information technology majors are looking at. Now, I told you geography was going to surprise you. They are also showing up in our technology area. Geographic information science is a heavily technological area. If you have used Garmin, if you've used Google app, uh, Maps, Apple Maps, you have used work from a geographic information scientist. Maps are no longer hand-drawn. They are all through computers and it's all technology. Natural science is our biggest area that we have in the College of Science and Engineering. We have biology, chemistry, biochemistry, again, geography, earth and atmospheric sciences. We have geology, which is the study of soils and rocks, meteorology, which is the study of weather and climate, uh, actuarial science from the Department of Statistics, Actuarial and Data Sciences. That is a very large major. Students studying that go on to work with insurance companies because they're studying risk. And it's actually quite an interdisciplinary major. Uh, students take finance and accounting and economics classes. We have the Department of Mathematics and their majors. We have physics and astronomy. So a lot of opportunity to explore the natural sciences. The last area I'm gonna talk about is health. And here you can see on the left-hand side, we have what we call pathways. For students wanting to go into medical school, dental school, optometry, pharmacy, veterinary medicine, physician assistant school. These are called pathways. They are not actually majors at Central because you can be any major you want as long as you have the requirements for admission into the postgraduate health school. And we will work with you and help you on those. As you've probably heard from all the other college representatives, we have academic advisors at every single one of our six colleges here at Central. We have health advisors working with students wanting to go into these pathways to make sure they are competitive applicants. Now the common majors are biology, biochemistry, chemistry, and neuroscience. And that they're common because the requirements for those health graduate schools are built into those majors. But you can be any major you want and continue on into these health pathways. All right, so some College of Science and Engineering highlights. As you have heard, we, like the other colleges, have a science and engineering residential college. Was it me? Do you need me to, do you need me to back up? I broke the internet. Oh, so we're back. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go back are we back? Okay. All 
All right, so I don't know if you heard about, we had some technical issues. Um, so I'm gonna go back over the health area of interest. Like I said, it is the last area of interest I'm gonna go through. On the left-hand side, you see the health pathways. For those students who are wanting to go into medical school, dental school, pharmacy, veterinary science, physician's assistant, optometry, those are pathways at CMU. They are not actually majors because you can be any major you want at Central and go into those pathways. The common majors are on the right-hand side. Those are biology, biochemistry, chemistry, and neuroscience. And they are common majors because we have the requirements for the uh, graduate school, like medical school, built into those majors. Now, continuing on, the College of Science and Engineering highlights, as you've heard from the other five colleges, just like them, the College of Science and Engineering has a residential college. This is where you are living and learning next to other STEM majors. There are people in your classes. You will be um, enjoying connections with faculty outside the classroom, academic field trips, um, networking with our alumni through the residential college. We uh, also allow our students, regardless of where they live, um, to do cutting edge research with faculty all you know, from the first time you step foot on campus, freshmen in our college are allowed to do research. And that's not just washing dishes and taking out. Oh, that's okay. Heidi, when we go live, you were on the CSE resources. That's the last slide I could see. Okay. On management with the three plus two program. Very good question, Anna. Um, I would say double majoring with athletic training is discouraged. I would defer to Dr. Renee Shingles, who is the uh, program director of that program. But as you know, and I stated earlier, this is a three plus two. The three portion of that, which is the bachelor's degree, is highly accelerated. And so there is a lot packed into those three years. So uh, while I am not the end all, uh, for that type of decision, I would certainly uh, defer to Dr. Renee Shingles for that final answer, but I, I believe they would discourage that. Awesome. We have another question from Hannah. How many years of schooling is communication science and disorders focusing on speech pathology? And I think Greg can answer that, but I can answer it as well because that was my major in undergrad. Um, so communication science and disorders is a four year program. For the most part, you can complete those courses in two years. So if you need to complete your um, academic programs like your math science, you can do those first and then go on to it. However, you can also begin taking courses in that major as early as your first semester. So. And then we have, it looks like that's all of the questions that are coming in at this time. So students, again, thank you for your questions that you have posted. If you have more, or if you have specific questions, um, know that we have links in the description box down below. Additionally, we will have our contact information um, offered to you all as well. One more question, like I asked before, I really want to get your input. If you have any ideas on more Fire Up Friday topics that you would like to see, please let us know. We want to make sure we can make that accessible for you all. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Thank you for working with us throughout any technical delays we may have encountered. We appreciate your time, your flexibility, and we hope to see you next Friday. Stay safe, take care, and fire up chips.